Hello everyone, welcome back to Other Law Home Podcast, the show that shares interesting issues about the law where you can relate with daily life. In this episode, we will be talking about how does the COVID-19 Act protect home buyers and housing developers. The amendments to the HDA 1966 came into effect on 18 March last year after the enforcement of the COVID-19 Act on 23 October 2020 last year. It is primary purpose is to offer protections to defaulting parties for inability to perform a contract during these difficult times. The relief is limited to home buyers who are unable to make payments due to measures taken to control or prevent the spread of COVID-19 under the Act, PCID Act 1988. However, contracting parties may dispute whether a casual links between failure to pay a home buyer an action under the PCID Act such as MCO, the Movement Controlling Order, Conditional MCO, CMCO, or Recovery MCO. We will take further look into the amendments in a while. So first off is modification to HDA 1966 by section. So first off is section 20, uh, 30, 32. The changes to the 1966 HDA were despite being p- passed by a parliament at a later date, they, they came into effect as if they had been implemented from 8, 18 March 2020. So in section 33, the amendments covered any agreements entered in before 18 March under Schedule G, H, I, and J of the 1989 Regulations on the Controlling and Licensing of Housing, HGR 1989. So next is section 34, where developers were not to charge a late payment fee to any purchasers who failed to pay for any installment for the period 18 March 2020 until 31st August 2020. The bill allowed the purchaser to extend the period up to 31st December 2020 and the developer cannot charge the buyer with a late payment charge for the extended period if the extension is given. We're moving on in section 35. Developers are given protection against any purchaser's claim for liquidated assessment damages. LAD from 18 March 2020 to 31st August 2020. So developers could create an extension until 31st December 2020 in accordance with sections 35 uh, bracket 2. When granted, the purchaser will be restricted until 31st December 2020 to seek any LADs against the developer. In section 35.4, Purchasers were given further protection in cases where the purchaser could not take possessions of that property. The purchaser, the purchaser would not be deemed vacant for the date of notification to have taken possessions to the developer from 18 March 2020 to 31st August 2020 or any extended period granted to it. In section 36, with regard to the period of defect liability provided for Article 36 of the COVID-19 Act, the period from 18 March 2020 to 31st August 2020 or any extend, extended period of time allowed by the, by the Minister until 31st December 2020 for the developers to carry out work to remedy or repair defects is exempted from the calculations of the time period for defect liabilities. Section 37. Any legal proceedings, judgment, or award to cover late payment interest payable by the purchaser or LAD to the developer between 18 March 2020 and the date of publications of the new act were not affected. Any late payment charges paid by the purchaser or LAD paid to the developer before the actual publications of the new act were non-refundable. Section 38. In respect of the submission of home buyer claims pursuant to Section 16 and 2 of HDA 1966, the government made further changes under Section 38 of the COVID-19 Act. The home purchaser was entitled to file a claim between 4 May 2020 and 31 December 2020 and has jurisdiction to hear the claim if a term of limitations of home buyer's claim expires the period 18 March 2020 through 9 June 2020. 
So what are the after effect? While the period of these amendments has ended, they are still a significant play. In a recent case whereby a, a purchaser bought an apartment under construction in January 2020 and expected to expected key collections in February 2021, the developer demanded a penalty payment of 1,000 ringgit Malaysia for the balance purchase charges price. In this case, the de- developer sent out the billing in February 2020 and should have received the balance purchase a month after they issued a billing. However, due to strict MCO regulations at that time, the bank only disbursed the balance purchase price only in May 2021. Upon discussing with the developer and relying on this act, the purchaser must not pay the state interest as it is waived. Well, basically, the article that I have uh, shared to you was one of many of the cases where purchase and developer were affected and act came into play. If you need further advice on the matter, do contact our lawyers and we are always available and ready to help. So for more further information, do visit our website at our article here and do follow our Instagram for more for more interesting issues and topics related for this topic. Do follow our Instagram and also Facebook as we love them. So that's all in this episode. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. Take care.